千里之行，始于足下。A journey of a thousand miles begins beneath the feet. We now gather in the Tao to travel the journey together. Welcome to Tao Talks with Derek Lin, where we take a deep dive into the Tao Te Ching by Lao Tzu. I would like to invite you to center your thoughts and direct your attention to this moment in time, to the here and now. To be fully present and mindfully aware, as we all ready ourselves for this sacred process of the Tao. When we talk about Gui demons. There are in the Tao Te Ching in this chapter of the Tao Te Ching. There are three different levels of what we'll be speaking to. At the surface level, Gui is in the mythological, superstition related sense, and that's the evil spirits, that's the ghost, the demons, etc. So mythologically, the demons inhabits the demon realm, a world. You know, sort of like hell or the afterlife or the um, the, the the bad place,、uh, the place of negativity where they all come from. That's the realm of the demons. Now, at the level above that, it becomes more abstracted, which is that it can represent negative forces in society, as I said. So, to the to the ancient ruler, that would be the context. The negative forces affecting a kingdom. To the personal level, demons would be negative forces, internal and external, that affect your life. Your life is your kingdom. You are the king or queen. You are the ruler. So what I want to do is I want to depict that. I want to show you. Then I want to divide up your world into two parts. There's、uh, the world external to you. That that is the the world you interact with, the people that you greet every day, the places where you go to work,、um, traffic on the road, going shopping, etc. That's your world. That's external to you. That is what you see out of your eyes. Okay. Now there's also The reverse, the internal world, your mental landscape. This is the world that other people don't see. This is the world that you are very familiar with, that you know very well.、Uh, it is with you at all times. It's what's inside your brain, what is inside your mind. So you are very familiar with it. Other people don't necessarily know what is in your mind, what is on your mind. So when we talk about Gui, the negative, toxic factors and influences can come at you externally and internally. When it's internal, you know, Western expression, we we would say, well, you know, he's got he's got inner demons, he's got demons within. Okay, well, it's exactly the same way that the ancient Tao masters thought of it. So. The internal demons they do exist, but then the external that would be, for example, other people who are the toxic elements in your life. Example: someone or a whole bunch of people who seem to love finding faults, and not just with you, but with everyone, everybody else as well. Just following, just、uh, trying to find faults all the time. Then there is also some people who actively try to sabotage you, right? I think everybody has seen examples of that. Even if you don't have someone who is actively trying to sabotage you, 
you know about the people that have tried to do it to others. Then there's people who maybe not necessarily finding faults or sabotaging you, but they want to make fun, they want to ridicule, they want to mock the mockery. That's also a negative and toxic element in life. Then there's also the critics, the naysayers, the people for whom nothing is ever right, similar to finding faults, except those who are finding faults, it may be like a work-related type of situation, criticism, it can be beyond that. It can just be someone who's making negative comments about what you're trying to accomplish. So what I'm trying to depict here, and there's, uh, you can, just looking at this diagram, you know that there's way more uh, than just these four devils or demons here that is attacking you uh, in life. Literally, we're all besieged on all sides. There's a lot of negative elements everywhere, and some people seem to take special delight in being negative. You probably know a few. So I just want to use the four here as the overall representation of those negative elements, and then the rest you can sort of figure out and fill in the blanks for yourself. Now I want to turn our attention to the internal mental landscape. What about the inner demons? What about the factors within you that are also negative and toxic? What could some of them be? Well, fears. Absolutely. It's something that we all experience. We all know what that is like. Fears are definitely negative and toxic. What would be another internal demon? Well, maybe something that we do, maybe a habit that is not contributing to uh, the best in you, maybe your health, bad habits. This could be as bad as addictions. And then negative emotions, you know, even when we're not talking about fears or bad habits, negative emotions can be like anger, rage, it can be like jealousy, it can be depression, it can be suspicions of what other people are up to, etc. It can be extremely negative, negative thoughts. Then selfish motives. Selfish motives are basically self-centric attempts to gain personal profits, to basically bolster one's reputation. Uh, selfish motives are yet another one of the internal demons that we all recognize. We have thoughts about that occasionally. So once again, here I've got four different kinds of elements that are just representative of all the possible negative factors that can be the inner demons for, for someone, for you, for me. This is for everybody. So here, this is just a depiction of how externally and internally there's demons coming at you from all sides, okay? So keep that in mind. There's more to say about this. Let's analyze the mythology-based language, map the metaphor to what actually happens from the human perspective. We started out talking about how you are being besieged on all sides, and one day you discover the Tao. You begin walking the path. The Tao begins to be present in your life. You understand how to utilize the Tao in your life. So I'll depict that by showing the yin and yang symbol here. So the Tao has appeared within. Nobody knows about this from the outside looking in. You know about it because the Tao is something that you hold in your heart. It is something that you understand in your mind. So then what happens? Well, we begin with fears. When there's the Tao in your mind, when there's the Tao as your spiritual companion in your internal mental landscape, the fears that you had 
turns into courage. So just like when we talked about how the demons have not been destroyed, they have not been decimated. They're still there, but they're keeping in their place. The context of courage from the Tao perspective is that you are not eradicating the demons of fear. True courage is deciding to take action anyway, despite the fears. Okay, so in that way, the analogy works perfectly. Now, the bad habits, what happens when you begin to study and cultivate the Tao? Well, one of the things that you have to do as you start walking the path is to cultivate different virtues. What that is can be different things for different people, but basically you can be replacing bad habits with the practice in virtues. Then, what about negative emotions? Well, those will never ever truly disappear. They will always exist in some form, but what you can do though is to supplant them, displace them with positive thoughts. This goes back to the story that I told before about displacing the weeds with crop, useful crop. Then lastly, selfish motives. When you understand the Tao, when you understand karmic consequences, and especially when you understand the interconnectedness of all humanity, then self selfish motives will transform into selflessness. Like for instance, compassionate activities that you undertake that is out of the true compassion flowing from the heart. So to summarize, fear, once recognized, it evaporates. Bad habits, these are time-wasting activities that contribute nothing to your life uh, and may even negatively impact your health, and it can include addictions. These, can, these get transformed into virtues. Negative emo emotions, these are things like anger, rage, depression, envy, jealousy, etc. You are displacing them with positive thoughts. And lastly, selfish motives, including personal profits, glorification of oneself, these turn into genuine compassion, um, being selfless to do things for other people. So let's, let's represent that in this graph. So once you have displaced these negative qualities, transforming them in the Tao to something that serves you, you gain peace. When you have the courage of the Tao, you have peace. When you are able to practice virtues, you gain a measure of peace of mind. With positive thoughts in your mind, instead of negative emotions, you are able to calm down, you are able to attain tranquility. And when you are able to practice selfless acts, naturally, that bolsters everything else. You are now well on your way in Tao cultivation, walking on the path. So that's what it looks like internally when the Tao is present, when you are using the Tao to manage your life. It begins on the right-hand side, the internal mental landscape. Now, keep in mind, externally, nobody knows what's going on in your brain. Nobody knows what's going on in your thoughts. But slowly but surely, these internal changes radiate outward to manifest externally and becomes a sort of protection. And this is where I, I would depict it as a shield, that the protection of the Tao is like a shield. Now remember, we can't change all the people. The Tao is not gonna magically transform the people around you, it's gonna magically transform you. Even though you cannot change all the people, you can only change yourself, when you have Tao on the inside, it begins to protect you on the outside. So for instance, for the people who are finding faults, no longer affecting you because you know you've done your best. You're not afraid of those who try to find faults. 
And what about those who try to, to sabotage you? Well, they can try, but they won't be able to find weaknesses that they can exploit. You've got the doubt. And those who try to mock you, well, they find no audience for their mockery. After a while, they just go away on their own. It's not funny anymore. And what about the naysayers and the critics? They find that you don't care. And the reason why it doesn't affect you, it's because you're on a mission. When you walk the path of the Tao, you discover the purpose and the meaning of life for yourself. You realize you're on your own personal sacred quest and you're on a mission. When that is the case, it really doesn't matter what the critics and naysayers say. It bounces right off. It doesn't affect you at all. They have no idea what they're talking about anyway. So that is the protection of the Tao. You can see how this works. You can see why this is so important. Same as what you have seen before, it starts with you, and this is dividing up your world into the external, the world that you experience externally, and the internal world, the world of your feelings and thoughts. So externally, we're talking about interference from others. So we've got deities and sages, these are representing the well-intended help and assistance that other people offer to you. So I've got the emojis with the little halos because you know these are the uh, these are the holy of the Tao people. You need help. I'm going to give you help whether you ask for help or not. Or I'll listen. Look, you're doing it all wrong. Let me show you how to do it right. Here's what you got to do. And then, you know, grabbing the wheel, grabbing the controls from you. So this is what active interference looks like when it's, when it's imposed upon you from the outside, from other people, well-intended people. And we can't skip the internal side. The internal side is when you feel the desire to interfere with other people. So your thoughts, also very well intended. Oh, look, they need my help. They need me. They need me desperately. Notice one thing. This is different from interference from the outside world. When you have this internal desire to interfere or meddle, it's it's very likely coming from a place of ego. Oh, look at them. They really need me. Only I can help them. I'll show them how to do it right. They're doing it all wrong. And when you're thinking that they're doing it all wrong, you are echoing exactly what a meddler from the external side is saying to you, you're doing it all wrong. Let me show you how to do it right. So that's what it looks like when you have the deities and sages inadvertently causing harm. Now, what you have to do is that when you cultivate the Tao, when there's Tao present in your mind, in your thoughts, it is something that, just like the previous example, it changes you as the first step. It starts by transforming your internal mental landscape. Then the desire to interfere turns into non-interference, a principle in the Tao, non-meddling, another way of stating that principle. 
the thoughts transform to, well, it's actually not about me. It's not that I'm the one who can, who is, I'm the only person who can help them. That's egocentric. It's not about me. It's about them. It's about what is good for them. And what may be good for them is for me to offer the help, but not actively impose the help onto them. And the thoughts of, I'll show them, I'll uh, take it away from them and show them how to do it right, that turns into, I'm going to observe and see if it's really a situation where I need to help. When you have those thoughts, you begin to gain peace of mind. And that is what we really want. And again, we cannot change other people, but here the Tao will protect you from external interference. That is to say, you can sidestep possible consequences, a hey, thanks but no thanks, and you can graciously uh, appreciate the good intention while not falling prey to the unintended consequence that can be causing harm. So I think you can see that this is a rich, rich topic with a lot of different ways that we can look at it. Our meeting has come to an end, but the journey continues on. Let us all travel safely so we can meet again. Until next time, may the Dell fill you with peace and happiness.